There was a really interesting study that just came out uh, that showed that apparently among working class voters who don't identify as Republicans, you know, which is the sort of pool of people that, you know, if you want Democrats to win elections, you know, that they have to appeal to. Um, the most popular messaging, and, and if, if anybody needs to like go back to this or, or, or this, this, this sounds so counterintuitive the first time, you know, like, like they just can't process it and, you know, you know, but bear with me. The most popular messaging is when you just have basic, like you talk about bread and butter issues and economic populism and you don't do a lot of like super annoying culture war posturing. So yeah, that sound I mean, like it could be I, true? I, I, yeah, I mean, blew my mind. I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I start to question the, the study uh, study itself because I was just so shocked. Uh, but uh, yeah, apparently it's true. Apparently it's legit. It was done Sometimes, by Jacobin. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you have to throw out all your priors, you know, and you just right. uh, got us with a fresh yeah. uh, blank slate. Uh, yeah. so that's fascinating. So, yes, this was a but, study that was that was commissioned by Jacobin. And YouGov and a, a new kind of think tank type of thing called the Center for Working Class Politics, which a lot of the, you know, Jacobin slash Jacobin adjacent guys are 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 involved with. Uh and uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a pretty uh, it was pretty interesting in the sense that I mean, beyond the sort of big headline, which we all kind of could have predicted before they uh, actually spent all the money and time and energy on on the study, um, the methodology I thought was kind of interesting, and and I just hadn't really seen something like it. Also, it's not like I I mean, I used to do a lot more polling reading when I was working in a news department, but like I didn't like super read through them, but I like read through this whole thing. Um, and it was fairly detailed, the, the way that they would create uh, sample candidates to compete against each other in a hypothetical election. Um, so they would create like a whole profile of a person like she's a black woman who's a teacher uh, who uh, is running as an independent. And she sounds like more or less like this. And these are her most important issues. And these are her, these are like her day one agenda um, and things like that. And then she's running against a, a white man who's a CEO who, you know, sounds more like, like this. Um, these are his top issues, and this is his day one agenda. Um, and, uh, and and then they would just ask the, the survey respondent to pick who they preferred. And then they just did that a bunch of times um, with a bunch of different permutations. And and that was the that was the results that, that were published. And, and, and they were pretty interesting once you dove into them. Yeah, so they, they did these, they did like these sound bites uh, that were like, kind of uh as well as like asking those questions about demographics and and all of that right? like you which um you know turns out uh that most um you know that most voter you know most voters in this you know working class non-republican category uh including you know like most non-white voters don't actually care very much about the the racial demographics of a candidate uh they do care about their um uh, about about their um, economic uh, background, uh, which which is not just like, you know, I mean, if you're thinking, oh, this is just like, you know, all the stuff that we want to hear as socialists or whatever, right? It's, it's not entirely, right? Because like small business owner got tons of points, you know, with this, yeah. with, with, with these voters. Uh, but, you know, they, somebody, they respond to people being, you know, somebody who you'd think of as like an ordinary person who might know what it's like, you know, to, uh, to go through, you know, the stuff that you go through. Uh, and uh, they they had these various um, uh, these all of these different um, sound bites that were like sort of a sort of basic stump speech uh, that you could uh, that you know that these hypothetical you know candidates uh, could could give right so they one of them I mean they didn't use these labels they just gave them the sound bites and had them react to it right you know see see what you you think but like one of them was like roughly speaking what we would think of as like woke moderate right you know it was like it was like sort of it basically sounded a lot like something kamala harris or pete Buttigieg, you know might might say that like yeah. there's some racial or justice. hillary 
Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. right. Uh, yeah, Hillary Clinton will, will never forget in 2016, she tweeted out that intersectionality graph with all the different ways. <laughs> that, uh, literally, like a tr literally a historic moment. And like, I think <laughs> it's going to go down. Like, it, <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those. It's not it's not quite like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer dealing in kente cloth. Uh, but yeah. uh, but but it's it's a landmark on the way on the way yeah. there. Well, also, it was just you know, president in the context of a presidential race, it's yeah. it's just even it's more than just some fun. Who gives a shit about some Congress people? Like no one really cares. But you know, um, the fact that the, yeah, the right. person the, the, the Democratic for great you know front yeah. runner for for president uh, was like, all right, what can you do? Like we understand, like Donald Trump has this message that seems to resonate with you know a certain category of voters in the Rust Belt. We might lose these crucial swing states that you know Democrats have always won. You know, in in the last you know ten elections, <sighs> Madam Secretary, what's your plan? Well, yeah, maybe I could tweet about intersectionality. <laughs> at, at, <laughs> do you think that would? Do you think that would, that would get them to come out and vote for me? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, it turns out it didn't work. Uh, should have uh, should have gone to Wisconsin, um, or literally said any sort of message that would have inspired people in any way to bother to show up to vote. Uh, I, either of those things uh, probably would have done it. Uh, but um, but yeah, like so. So one of them is that that sort of like Hillary, the version of Hillary Clinton who's tweeted about intersectionality. Right, we've had many Hillary Clintons over the years. You can watch old clips of her in Arkansas in the eighties where she has, she's like doing her best Arkansas accent and, and yeah. she's just trying to prove how folksy and down home she is. Uh, you can watch, you know, Hillary Clinton in the super predator era, you know, in the nineties and, you know, in early two thousands, you can watch Hillary Clinton, you know, uh, in the Senate arguing against gay marriage. Uh, there's so many Hillary's that are available on YouTube. The, uh, this this but this soundbite was the woke intersectional Hillary uh, soundbite, uh, and then uh, so and then there's like a you know woke leftist one you know so it's like roughly AOC ish right you know that you're mm -hmm. that you're doing the same um, the same kind of like signaling you know about um, you know cultural cultural issues as the first one but you're combining it with some sort of economic populist message and then there's a like culturally mainstream moderate one which is like sort of classic pre-woke democrat and yeah, uh, obama yeah right obama exactly uh and then there's the sort of no frills left populist one and uh and, and this actually does seem pretty significant to me that like and this was a big like again it's jacobin and this you know center for work class project but it's also like you gov like these are these are professionals they know what they're doing right you know they they they're asked to design something but you know they they uh they they designed this they administered it and this is actually a huge poll like most most polls have much smaller yeah. sample sizes than this and it's like an unusually well thought out poll and yeah turns out that they like that picture, that classic picture of of uh, Bernie Sanders being interviewed by Maureen Dowd, where he's like waving around the list of topics he's willing to talk about, you know, that like she's trying to ask him like horse race questions and what do you think about AOC and all this stuff. He's like Britney Spears. <laughs> she did try to ask him about Britney Spears. That's true. I forgot that. Uh, <laughs> You know, when, when he, so he's like, look, free Britney is not on this list, right? Like I'm, I'm willing to talk about stuff that's on the list, which is like healthcare and jobs and, you know, stuff like that. And it turns out that that's the kind of um, like, that's the kind of Democrat spust up speech that working class non-Republican voters actually respond to. Yeah. Yeah. And it, honestly, like it was interesting, like if you if you went to the subsection of just non voters, which on the left mm -hmm. we identify as always kind of like, you know, yeah, right. the sleeping giant or whatever of American politics yeah. or, whatever, you know, like the, the potential to transform the electorate, blah, 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 um, that amongst non voters, uh, the progressive populists, as they called it, the Bernie Sanders type of, of soundbite did, did, did really well. But the second best was the mainstream moderate um, mm -hmm. that that they preferred kind of like a Joe Biden type messaging, you know, Joe Biden fits squarely into the mainstream mm -hmm. moderate, like no one can accuse Joe Biden of being woke. <laughs> uh, 
and um and then it was the woke progressive and then it was the um woke moderate which is always you know obviously poison like n literally no one likes that shit um, yeah <laughs> yes did, did you see by the way today uh there was this article uh let me see if i could find this um it was yes <laughs> um the CNN opinion piece says, uh, uh, "Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do the, uh, I'll do the screen share because people need to see this in all its glory." Um, that uh, crone tab. Here we go. Uh, so CNN opinion: um, Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg could agree to run together in 2024 if Biden does not run again, giving the Democratic Party a very strong ticket that would seem like a natural continuation of Biden's first term. Is that someone from the Lincoln Project or is that person's name Lincoln Mitchell? Or is it like, you know, Lincoln Project Mitchell? Uh, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know that person. But, uh, oh, the, the triple parentheses around the name in 2021 is always a good tell. <laughs> that, but, is, uh, that is woke moderate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is woke Definitely. moderate to the max. <laughs> uh, there's a certain type, the woke moderates within the Democratic Party, which are very powerful, in, especially amongst these sort of kind of professional class within the Democratic Party, uh, hate fucking conflict. They, th they like just hate it. They hate like, they're like, what if we all just ran together on the same ticket? You know? And they come up with these fantasies, not realizing that all these politicians, whether they're woke or not, are all fucking psychopaths and they would never fucking share a ticket with anybody until they absolutely had to. Um, but they always like dream of these big unity tickets that none of the politicians ever actually want to do. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>